Hey, this is Jonathan, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. Uh, so normally I like to just log uh, my progress on the Mini Randall project. I also have a blog post I have to write up on that soon at some point. Uh, I'll get to that eventually. <laughs> Eve eventually! It'll, it'll happen. But uh, in the meantime, I've also been uh, just working on some music transcribing. So um, essentially, uh, I have relative pitch, <laughs> so I'm able to like identify notes that I hear just by sound. I've, I was, I don't know. I've always had this, I guess, ability, so to speak. Uh, I don't know. It, to me, it just seems really natural, and it's um, not. Uh, it's not really particularly amazing or anything. But I decided to uh, transpose this uh, Harvest Moon Two song. This is the spring theme from Harvest Moon 2 for the Game Boy. And essentially, I I opened it up in a Finale Notepad. I, I know Finale may not be the best program, but that that's what I used in my coursework back when I was uh, taking music classes in school. And uh, yeah, that's the software we used. And I came up with a, I guess, here's, here's what the song looks like transposed. Um, obviously, this isn't optimal because I'm using like a bunch of like triplets everywhere. It's not really that elegant. I could have changed the time signature to be like, uh, I don't know, like 6-8 timing or something. It probably would have worked better. But yeah, this is what I came up with. Uh, I guess we can have a listen first. <laughs> Is that being captured? <laughs> I'm not sure. Is that? I thought, oh, I don't know. I can't tell. Well, anyway, uh, if it's not being captured, uh, I assure you it's just playing a song. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, did the transposition for this, but I wasn't really happy with um, the existing notation because um, obviously it's, like I said, it's not as elegant as it probably could be. So, I decided, well, maybe I could do something to fix that. And the idea I got was to export the file as a music XML file and then uh, manipulate it with a uh, Rust program so I get some more practice in writing Rust. And uh, yeah, music XML, it's a, uh, it, it works just like an XML document. So. There should be some XML parsing library that will allow me to manipulate it. And yeah, this is this is a, just some site that lets you upload uh, music XML files, and it just displays the notation unless you like play the actual track. So yeah, it's a this is a pretty neat little tool. It was the first result on Google when I looked for like a music XML player. So yeah, let's uh, let's begin. Uh, so right off the bat. I'm going to be creating a new uh, binary project. So let's do this. There we go. Uh, you can see all my other Rust projects on this machine. I've, I've cloned a few from other people's repositories and played around with a, a lot of game development stuff, you can see. Uh, so now let's just go ahead and try and open that project that we just created. Oh. Yep, we'll just do it in this window. And here we go. Already started. I'll we'll just wait for IntelliJ to do its thing. So. I guess first things first is we're going to need to look for a good XML parsing library. So that's where I'm going to head first. Uh, oh, XML parser rust. All right, so I have looked at these very briefly in the past. And I know there's two of them. There's XML-RS and there's Quick XML. Quick XML offers higher performance. It sounds like it's being maintained a bit more as well, since it has like a higher version. Um, yeah, this, this project just seems to be the more uh, developed one from what I've seen. 
So I'm going to probably use this crate right here. And yeah, the, this, is what, this is what we need to add to our cargo.toml. Oh, hello. I don't think I want those. Yeah, we're going to be uh, get ignoring a bunch of stuff later. But for now, we're going to want this. And that's pretty much all we need, as far as I know. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, I'm tempted to just install this plugin. I know there is an IntelliJ Toml plugin, but I'm just... I'm too lazy to just go and install it, because it... I mean, Toml is pretty self-explanatory as it is. I don't, I don't really understand what good a plugin will do. It just doesn't seem very useful to me. So, let's just do our usual extern crate. I think they added some new uh, syntax or something, or they, they, they changed syntax in the most recent uh, update to the Rust compiler that allows you to maybe avoid using this extern crate thing, but I don't actually remember. Now, we can't have dashes in the actual name of the crate in our uh, .rs file, so it's going to be underscore. Okay, so now... Why is it complaining? Oh, probably because it doesn't recognize it as a crate yet. Um, yeah, now we got to figure out how to actually parse the file. So I do have, I do have the file sitting somewhere. Uh, what's the best way to do this? I'm trying to think. Yeah, let's go here. Let's just drop this file right in. Well, maybe we'll make a directory for it. There. Now we'll put the music XML file in there. There we go. It's moving it, but it doesn't really matter, honestly. Yeah, we, we, won't, we won't necessarily check this in. But yeah, this is our XML file. And now it's time to actually try and parse it. So where's the documentation? Well, here's an example of using the reader. OK. Yeah, so we're probably going to want to read this from a file. Um, let me go and figure out how to do that. Uh, I guess open file rest. Right, okay. So we should be able to just do a file open. Yeah. And this should look in the right directory, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think it starts at the root of your project, typically. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be. Okay, so need to use standard FS file. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this because we're probably going to want more. Yeah, for now we're just going to go standard FS file and just do a file open. I'm not sure if I want to just read all the contents of the file. Yeah, buffered reader seems like it would be a little bit better. Let me read this. Hmm, okay. Okay, interesting. Huh. Well, okay, what does the XML thing use? 
Reader from string, okay. So I guess we'll just read it into a string for now. That's fine, I guess. I was expecting to like do like a, the iterator type of thing, so I don't have to load the entire file into memory at once, but I guess for a start, for, if just for beginning, I think it's okay if we just do that. It's not, it's not necessarily going to be permanent. Okay, so let the file be a file open. And our main should return result. Uh, what kind of result am I returning? I'll just do this. Oh, that's from standard IO, huh? Well, I should probably just do this. So I can do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I, I don't want to... Because um, you know how my, there's all these different types of results? I want to have them prefixed by the module that they're in, because otherwise it just gets way too confusing, and it'll be kind of ambiguous. So we can just point directly at our music XML slash Harvest Moon 2 GBC Spring. XML file. And there we go. Now we can do the thing that they do to read the string into a file. Yeah. I think it was string new and then file dot read to string. And then they pass in the contents. Yeah, that makes sense. There we go. That should just uh, read the contents of the file. So, function returns units have result unit. Well, I know. We're just gonna. We'll just include a little OK, I guess, for now. Oh wait, no. We we want that. OK with the unit. Um. What else? Yeah, so I guess I should outline my goal. My goal is to transpose the song, or, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure I already did that. Oh no, I transcribed it. No, wait, no, is that? I, I don't know the words. <laughs> There's too many different words. Uh, they all start with trans. It's very confusing. I just wanted to, like, shift all the notes up by an octave, because I don't think this is, uh, the, like, the, the way that I uh, notated it, I don't think it's in the right octave right now. Like after having listened to it, the the song, the original song, more. Yeah, that was one of the first things I wanted to do. And I know you can easily do that in other programs and stuff, but it's like, come on. If I have an excuse to write Rust code, I'm going to take it. Plus, you get a little bit more control over, you know, uh, what operations you can perform when you're just, you know, writing your own program. Especially... Uh, since I, I don't have to deal with a UI and the limitations of their UIs. So, there we go. Uh, wait, I want to look at this because now we're going to do the reader from string. So I'm going to use quick XML reader. That should be good. I'll just do what reader from string. Well, can I convert I think that's sh that should be fine, right? Okay, and you can use a slice syntax for that. Yeah, okay.
That should be okay. So I'll just read that into there. Yeah, yeah, you're just gonna keep complaining, I know. Cool. So I figured that part out. Now I need to do... What? Let mute reader? Okay. Equal all that. Cool. So now we have a reader. With the reader, I want to actually... Oh, so they use a loop. Reader does not implement iterator because it outputs borrowed data. Cows. Oh, so I actually have to do a loop, huh? Interesting. Huh. Wow. That's kind of annoying. I kind of wish it was an iterator, but oh well. Yes. I guess that's okay. What's the other XML crate use? Does it treat? Yeah, well, look at that. It's not very much... Oh yeah, there's documentation. Let's go back. I want to read that. Any examples? No, they don't do... Well, I think it might be an iterator, because they can do this uh, for E in parser. It does. It, event reader implements into iterator, so you can just use it in a for loop directly. Okay. Fair enough. Hmm. Oh, okay. Reader dot read event. Okay, so this is just your typical like do a while loop read. Sax parser, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. I guess that's okay. Uh, yeah. We should probably do a while reader dot read event or something. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, this doesn't return a boolean. It returns, like, a, a result. Okay. Yeah. But this is just gonna loop infinitely, right? So... Oh, but it breaks when you hit an end of file. Okay, I, I understand now. I could do a while let, then. Because I can do a while let okay event... Uh, EOF, or like, while well, it's not this, then keep looping. I like that. Makes sense to me. Uh, maybe I should break this out into its own uh, function or something. I might do that. Maybe a little bit later. So we also need to get event from here. I think that's from the same place, right? Should be. Because they have... Oh no, events. Event, okay, fine. I understand. I understand everything. Do that.
Well, let. Oh wait, no, I can't do that. Uh, hmm. I didn't think about this. Okay, maybe I do have to just do this break thing. Because I, wa I want to do like a while at not that pattern, but that seems like it won't work. Because, yeah. Is there a way to do this? Reader dot, what was it, read event? Oh, it needs a buffer too? Okay. Man, this thing needs a lot of things. And the buffer is just a vector? Okay. Well, that's simple. Can I do that? Might want it. Uh, well, doesn't seem to matter. Let's pass in the buffer. Well, I need to. I probably need to give, make give it a mutable borrow of the buffer, actually, right? Yeah, okay. Alright, so, while let. Hmm. I can't, I can't do like a negative match, can I? Can I? Uh, if let rust. If I was cleaner, yep. Yeah, they can match any enum value. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, I kind of have the opposite case. If let, wait, if not let? Oh yeah, here. about that. You, so it has to be a positive match, huh? Oh, jeez. I disagree. Well, that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> of course. Huh. Didn't know about this limitation. All right. So it seems like we don't actually get a choice. We can't do an if let on this because yeah, we 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 literally do not get a choice. Huh. I guess the loop would be the most idiomatic thing to do here then in that case. It seems like a Seems like a really strange restriction, but I mean, whatever. That's that's the way the library was written. So what am I supposed to do about it other than cry?
Yeah, I just have to do the match then. Not really a huge fan of this syntax, but oh well. You gotta you, you gotta work with what you got. And now I know, and knowing is half the battle or something. Okay. So I'll break that. Let's see what else. Um, wait, this is not what I wanted to look at. Yeah, I want to look at this. Okay, and then we want to do this for catching all the other patterns, probably. Yeah, I feel like the problem here is just... The, 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 it's just the fact that end of file is in an okay, and when we want to match on the result, it's, yeah. Yeah, this is just, this just doesn't really lend itself that well to, um, while at, uh, syntax, so that's kind of unfortunate. Oh, okay. Clear the buffer. Good idea. We'll do that. Yeah, this isn't the cleanest. But it's supposedly the fastest, so... Or, like, the fastest of the existing crates. So it's like, what can you do? Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll just return unit, I guess. For every other case. Oh, this probably should be like a comma or something, right? So if anything else that happens, we're just going to ignore. Well, that's A-OK -okay with me. Uh, I guess we could try running this. Yeah, certainly could. See what it does. It might not compile right away, so I want to make sure that actually, you know, works. In the meantime, while it's compiling, we can start uh, looking at the actual XML file and trying to figure out what I need to do. So, yeah, like I said, I wanted to shift everything up by an octave. Nice. Do I need a... oh, there must be a certain trait I need to implement for that to work. Yeah, I need the prelude. Nice, it's a star import. I don't even get to know what it is. It's just literally just, yeah, here's a star import. Alright, fine. Oh, and I can't do that because... Uh, of course. How about this? There, now that's happy. Well, in that case, I might as well just not do that and just do this then. Right? So now we should be able to run that. Oh, still? Still not? Hmm, I forgot my question mark. That's right, because, yeah. Warning. Result, which must be used. Okay. There's only be an error variant which should be handled. Right then. Is that what do they do? Oh, they just. They handle it, alright? They sure do. They sure handle it. Yeah, so that should just, like, run and do nothing. Yeah, there we go. 
cool. So supposedly it was able to open this and read it and everything. We're good. So now we need to go and look at this again and try and find, uh, I guess, the attribute that I want. So the attribute that I'm looking for is probably, where's the actual notes? I guess I have to look for like pitch. Yeah, see, well, we're gonna look for these pitch elements. Every time I come up to a pitch, I think what I wanna do is, yeah, take the, keep the step the same, but raise the octave one level, see what that does. I've never manipulated music XML in my life. <laughs> so, well, at least not without like, you know, an editor, like a proper like notepad finale type of software, so I have to actually uh, learn how that works as well. So that'll be interesting. That'll be fun. Okay, so this is looking for like tag one. Where's tag one? Here it is. Oh yeah, and there's tag one up there. Tag one, print line, attribute values, okay. And then there's tag two. How is this gonna work? Do I just wanna look for anything, like any octave tag, and then just like bump it up one? Maybe that's what I wanna do. Yeah, that could work. I'll try it. So they have this OK event start, ref E. Makes sense. And the way that they do this is they match again on the event name. And they check if it's a certain string. Okay, and they start with a, I think it, that means it's a binary string. So if we get a binary string labeled octave, I'll do a, quickly do this, just because I'm gonna have to do that. Then they do a count plus equals one. Ah, oh, so they're just counting tags here. That's pretty simple, I guess. Yeah. Don't think I'm going to be doing that. We're going to have to change the... We're going to have to write that back. That's the, that's the real... <laughs> that's the real challenge here. So how is that going to work? If I want to overwrite the file or like create a copy of the file, I have to use the writer, won't I? Okay, well this example kind of sucks because it's so thin. Let me read this on the actual like uh, re repo page. Um, let me think. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna come down here. And we're gonna do, what, what am I gonna do now? Right, into inner, into inner, huh. Oh, you can like push attributes? Whoa, okay. Interesting. Right, so you still need a reader. Uh huh. Right, new cursor, new, okay. Creates a new element. 
Alternatively, we could reuse e by calling e dot into owned. Oh, okay. Fascinating. I guess that's the property of e being a cow. I think that's what it is. If you have a cow, you can do this into owned thing. Alright, so they create an element, might start owned, b my lm to vec. Collect existing attributes. Copy existing attributes adds a new my key equals some value attribute. Okay. Writes the event to the writer. Hmm. All right, I'll have to think about this. Huh. Push attribute. I'm curious to know how this is going to work. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. This is going to like What's this going to do? Yeah, because this, this just adds an attribute. No, I don't want to do that. I want to create a new element. I don't want to add new attributes. OK. Well, if I want to create a new element, how would I do that? Or replace the element. That's going to be tricky. Oh, writer.write event. Event start lm is OK. Huh. Oh, I, I see. I see what they do. Oh, interesting. So I could do like a writer.write event, and it would just let me modify that right in place, right at that line. So that seems pretty good. That seems like what I would want. There's no, uh, oh, there's docs. Cool. Well documented crates are very welcome. So no, I don't think I need the reader. I just need uh, the events. What do they do? They get the attributes, XML attributes module. Ooh. Okay, so that means. How do they read the actual values then? Like, what if I wanted this test too? How can I get that? Event text. Okay, got it. I think that's what that is. Uh. Yeah. What's the, what are the different events? I want to see what this event enum is. Because that is not what I was expecting. I have to say, uh, the XML reader in C Sharp seems a little bit uh, easier to use than this. But I, I, I haven't familiarized myself with this just yet, so I, I guess I can't really say that that's true. But yeah, it, it certainly feels that way right now. Event emitted by reader read event. Yeah, okay. So here's all the different events. Character data between a start and an end element. I'm glad that this is documented at the very least. Yeah, and then there's EOF. Okay. Yeah, it seems like I need this, this text element. Okay, 
Well, I don't want to replace all text elements. I only want um, the ones between the start and end that say octave, right? So that seems like it could be a problem. How am I going to avoid like just overwriting everything? I guess... Hmm, no, I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. Uh, wow. Okay, and if you hit an end tag, then they write an event, end. Huh, okay. Sure. So the expected result, so here's the original, this is this tag with all these values, or these attributes, and then they replace the this tag with my lm. Interesting. Huh. Oh, I see. I want to replace the entire thing. So I would write an event... Um, with the value from that XML element plus one. That's what I'd do. I, I get it now. Understood. So I do need a writer. Let's go get a writer. And we'll just put it right here. Now I need to get the writer from here. Oops. Ah. <laughs> what am I doing? Let's do that. There we go. Writer. Cursor comes from standard IO, I think, or standard something. Yeah, it does. Okay, <laughs> this is annoying. Let's just do this, and then do cursor. There we go. I am enjoying this new syntax. It's, it's very helpful, in my opinion. Alright, so I basically just want to do this. Yeah, I, I literally just want to do this, but different. Okay. So I could reuse E by calling into owned, but I think for now I'm going to not do that. Yeah, and if they have one of these, they just a new end event with my elm. Okay, makes sense. So yeah, I just basically need to do this. Cool. Uh, just so that I know what I'm doing. What was it like? Bytes start. Where's byte start come from? Bytes start and bytes end, that's probably what I want from events, okay. Alright, there we go. We'll just do a bytes start. Um, they use owned. I might just stick with that for now. Just be safe. Do the safe thing. Make sure the program works correctly and then start doing crazy things later. Oh, interesting. They convert this to a vector? Alright, sure. Uh, it's still going to be octave. So we don't want to change that at all. What we want to do 
is just overwrite the value. So that's the only important part. There we go. Seems fine to me. And now we're going to do a write event. And then we'll do another write event, I think. Yep, that seems right. So we'll, we'll do a double write event like this. I don't really care about the assert right now, so I'm just going to do this. Write event, event start with lm. And write event, event text. Now I need a bytes text. All right, so I guess I have to do something similar, huh? Oh, that probably doesn't matter. Yeah, there we go. I don't need that. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm getting confused. Oh, do I need to do this? Yeah, okay. All right, then. We'll do a bytes text. So bytes text there. We'll just go to the end of the line here. That's probably not the fastest way to do that, but whatever. That's what I decided to do. And let's we'll call this the uh, text. Oh wait, I need to actually read the value. Roro. <laughs> I can't just arbitrarily. Oh no, that's right. I actually do need to get the value out of there. How am I going to get the value out of this element if I'm only on a tag. Oh dear. Uh huh. Yep, did not think this one through. Nope. Ah. Uh. Okay, what do I need to do then? So I'm matching on a e dot name. That's what is this e? E is in, is the thing is the element inside of event start. Where's event start? I need that. That's the that's the trick. Here we go. E event, event start. Wait, that's not in here. <laughs> that's not in here. Yeah, it's not in here. I also hear water running for some reason beside me. But there shouldn't be anyone there. It's, it's, it's spoopy. It's uh, it's it's almost Halloween, right? I guess it's thematic. For real though, what? <laughs> uh, what is going on? What is happening? Wait, yeah, that's a. It takes a byte start. Of course. That's what this is. It's a byte start, and byte start has what? A name, right? It has an own name, has a borrowed name, it also has a name. Can I get the value somehow? Or am I stuck? I think I might be stuck here. Returns the unescaped and decoded string value. Okay. That's not what I was expecting, but it could work. It could work. Unescaped. No, that's a tag name. That's not going to give me the actual value inside, is it? 
because we we aren't at the value yet, the the text. That's the feeling I'm getting. I think I need to do something else, but I don't know exactly what. Probably... I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to like set some flag. <laughs> Is that what I have to do? Because gosh, that, that just seems kind of gross. I don't... I, I'm desperately trying to avoid that, but I think that might be what I have to do. Because all I can do is add attributes and stuff here, right? Decoded string value. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this means. This looks promising, but I, I don't trust it. Now, hang on. Hold on a second. I don't have to match this immediately. Well, I do want to match it, but I could maybe do a read event? Maybe? But then I'd be mutably borrowing the buffer twice, right? That wouldn't work. I can't do that. I can't have two mutable borrows of buffer. So, poop. I think we're stuck. I think the only way I can make this work is if I set some flag here, then I do the, go into the other case with the actual like text event, and then I write, I overwrite it, and then I do the, yeah, huh. So okay, this is not what I want to do at all. I don't want to write anything here. I don't think I can write anything here. Can I? No, I don't think so. Because if I, if I, if uh, I can't write anything until I've read the value, and the value is not going to appear unless I actually, you know, get it from the text event. So we're stuck. This is never going to work. Good to know. What I should do is just, I guess, set some flag. Uh, this sucks. I, I don't like this. I don't like this solution at all. Oh, wow. <laughs> I reached for that camel case, as you could see. I really did. That's literally all I can do here. Yeah, it's the only thing I can think of that'll actually work. So there we go. Now, I guess that'll just return unit? I'm not sure. Kind of gross. Kind of the only way I can make this work, though. It's a tad bit unfortunate. Actually, I don't even... Well, I do, actually. I do need to check this, because if I don't check it, then bad things are going to happen. Right? Like... It's going to set the flag and then never unset it, so everything will just get overwritten, which will be wonderful. No. These are some pretty strange limitations, but I think it has to do with the, 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 uh, the crate I'm using. Just not uh, being all that flexible. Not sure how I feel about that. Okay, yeah, so they do the ref E again. Just, I, I, I'm just trying to make sure. Do another B octave, I guess. Yeah, that should be that should be it. 
And then we'll once again do the same thing. Found octave is false now. Oh yeah, I probably want to put a comma there so I can separate the cases out. Okay, fine. Actually, why don't you even need a ref E? Does it, am I even using that for anything? Well, they use ref E for all these, so I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. We need to read the element somehow. So match E dot... Well, no. Well, yeah, actually. What am, I, what, what am I supposed to do? Check if found octave. That's what I need to do. I know you can add, like, guards. Yeah, they. that's what they do. I'll just do that. Like, whatever. That works. Kinda sucks. Well, this is a bunch of crap I don't want to look at. It's just so many methods on this. How do I get the value out of my text element? This the, this running water sound is really it's really bothering me. It's like stealing away my focus. Right, event. Uh, where was the text? Yes, you. You there. Uh, from plane? How do I get the value out of it? Get escape content. What do they use? Do they? I guess they don't actually read the values, do they? How do they read the values? Let's go like e.name. Well, poop. I don't think I have an e.name for this, do I? Yeah, I don't. What the heck? Am I am I going crazy or You know, this one does have like a name, guess an undecoded raw tag name. Wow. Escaped, I guess, is what I want. That's That seems to be all I can do. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, I can just do escaped, I guess. What else am I supposed to do? Can I take a can I get a string out of those bytes? Yeah, I guess so. That's what I have to do. Okay. Let's just go and find out if we can get it from the bytes. No? Oh, jeez. Really? Really? Uh, 
Are these U8s? They are. Maybe I have to just use from UTF-8. I don't know if this is UTF-8, though. From... There's a whole bunch of froms. Well, those are all the froms. They're all from UTF-8 or UTF something, so... That's cool. From... From... From. There we go. From. From that. I hope that's okay. Because <laughs> I don't know. So now we own a string value. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take value and we're going to parse it as an int. Okay. Parse string as int rest. Dot parse. Oh, okay. And it's going to be, it's going to be unsigned, I think. Yeah, probably will be unsigned. So I'll just use an i32. Yeah, we'll just do value dot parse i32. That should do it, right? Well, then I get, a, I get an option from that, or a result. I can't remember. Oh, it's a result. Cool. Great. <laughs> just put a question mark down. Don't complain. Just put a question mark down. Uh. And then we'll do what? How do they um how do they write event and overwrite stuff? I know that they overwrote that value earlier in the writer. I guess this just overwrites it. <laughs> I have no idea. Writer dot write event, blah 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 is okay. Let's just try that. Honestly. Like, how bad could it be? Oh, I'm gonna need to make a uh, a text, a bytes text, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, Welp, this is certainly. Not what I was expecting from this. Oh, it has to be a byte sequence. Nice. Oh, that's right. I need to... Right. I increment it, and then I turn it into a string again. Okay, that seems all right. But now I need it to be a byte string. Is this is this going to work? I don't. I'm I'm trying to think. It won't. Uh. Yeah. Oh well. I have no idea from plain string. I could do that. Yeah, let's just try that. Let's just try doing the plain string. Uh, 
and I'll just give it a new octave like that. There you go. Done. Now we'll just pass in new text, and that should do it. If I'm not mistaken, this will work. I'm a little bit scared, but it should, it should do its thing, I hope. Oh, I don't need to actually do this check. I just realized. Yeah, I can just do that. That works. That certainly does. Oh boy, oh boy! I want to. I want to look at the ex the expected value that's going to come out. So I'm going to do this. Why is it like double into inner like that? I don't. That's weird. This API is weird. Into inner, into inner. Oh great. Right then, and then they compare these two. I see. Uh, what am I gonna do? I'm thinking what I should do is just. Well, I I don't want to work with U8. Obviously, that that doesn't seem very good. Can I do a string dot from? and then give it the vector. Yeah, can I just do a string from this guy? That might work. Maybe. <laughs> it's not too likely, but I mean, I, I have to try. I, I have to try something. And then I will be able to stop that. Stop that. Stop being annoying, Windows. I'm gonna try and like print it, I guess. No, or maybe I shouldn't print it. Maybe I should just write it to a file. That's probably safer. How do I write it to a new file? Standard file. Write all. Okay. Sounds good to me. So I'll do this, file create. And then we're going to do a file that write all. And it will require ah, okay. Result. That should do it. That should do it. What do you mean you wanted? Uh, expected. Oh no, it, it actually expects. Ooh. Ah. I don't need to make this into a string. I don't need that at all. Yeah, this works. This is perfect. Never mind. I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this then. And I guess we will see. Does this do what I expect it to do? Probably not. Nope. Oh, here's a bunch of problems. Oh. Nice. Value is not what I thought it was. Oh, right, because this was an error. Duh. String from e.escaped. So e.escaped gives us a bunch of bytes. But I need the bytes to be put into a string, and then the string to be parsed as an integer, and then to convert back. So, oy vey. Oy vey indeed. We're going to have to... We're going to have to read from UTF-8, aren't we? I think we will. I mean, that's fine. From UTF-8, yeah. Wait, this takes a vector? Not a slice? Why would it not take a slice? Why would it actually take a vector? 
Oh, no, wait, no. The thing is, if you take a... Uh, right, right, right. It was uh, taking... Oh, wait. Huh. Okay. I think if you take vector, it's fine. But the rest of these are taking slices, which is kind of weird. This kind of surprises me, I guess. But yeah, a reference to a vector would be kind of pointless. Okay. Sounds good to me. Let's just do that, then. Can I convert this into a vector at all? I'm not really sure. I might have to do this. We need to have a lossy. I mean, that shouldn't be too bad, right? Except this is a cow now. Nice, I didn't want that. Okay. Oh, there's an unchecked one, but that's that requires unsafe. Well, that's fantastic. See, if I owned this value, then it'd be okay, but I don't own it. I only have a reference to it, so we, I think we do have to do it from UTF-8 lossy, and then we're going to have to do like a uh, to owned. Right? No? How, how does cow work? <laughs> how do cows work? Cow rust. Yeah, how does the cow work? That's exactly the question I was asking. Uh, I just want to get a stray hang. I, I, I didn't. This is more than I bargained for. This is a good opportunity to learn about cows, though. Like, don't you want to learn about cows? I love learning about cows. Cows say moo. And apparently, implement a lot of traits. I guess that makes sense. Remember, the cow is a docile creature. The, oh, is it into owned? I don't know. Yeah, I think it is into owned, isn't it? I'm so bad at everything I do. There we go. <laughs> it's into owned. That's how I get the uh, owned string out of that. Cool. Stop. Chair, stop creaking. I hate you. <laughs> now we should be able to have no problems whatsoever. And now I have problems again. Trait bound error. Not satisfied. Eh? Whatever, okay. <laughs> Just unwrap it, please. What? What do you mean? No. Wait. Oh, do I have to parse it as an integer? Can I... Oh, convert. Ah! Convert int i3... Or I32 to, to sorry, there we go. Now to go back the other way. To string, okay. Well, that was a lot simpler than I thought it would be. If I'm gonna be quite honest. I mean, of course it would be to string. Hey, don't you want a to string? No, no, yeah, no. Seems okay. Oh yeah, there we go. Look, it, it, it did its thing. Oh my god, this is not what I wanted. What happened? 
Wait, uh, did I miss something? Wait a minute. What? <laughs> it, it got all the octaves, but it didn't... What did it do? What did it do? That's a bug. So, wait... If you don't write it, it... What, what, what? Oh, this stuff got kept the same... Oh, hello there. I see you. Ah, I'm bad. Got it. I need that. Wow, that's not obvious at all. I mean, it is obvious, but I'm just dumb. Okay, so screw the assert. We don't assert anything, ever, because I'm, I'm bad. There we go. Now, if we hit that, we should be okay. Match arms have incompatible types. Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Okay, maybe we do need an assert then. Does assert return a result though? Because that would surprise me. What? Are you kidding me? Oh wait, it, it actually... Is it running? I think it's running right now. Oh yeah, it's running right now. That's what's happening. I was, I was wondering what was happening here. Because it was stuck. I thought it had just like died, but no, it didn't. Unreachable pattern? Oh no! I did a bad. Wow, I hate this. <laughs> I did a bad. I did a very bad. But it was like not even an obvious bad. Yeah, because that's... Right, that pattern will never be reached. I'm glad the compiler can actually tell me that as like a warning though, that's pretty cool. But yeah, that's that, that's just silly. I'm sorry I'm bad. Whoa! I'm really sorry I'm bad. What happened here? <laughs> what happened here? What? This, is, this doesn't look anything like this, by the way. Just putting it out there. Whoa, what? Can you not look so crazy, please? <laughs> this didn't work as well as I thought it would. <laughs> what is happening? Why are there all these like empty spaces and stuff? This looks terrible. This is terrible. And I don't think it even works. Yeah, look at this. Unexpected tokens all over the place? What? Where did all my tokens go? All my tokens. Oh wait, I just figured it out. I'm I'm terrible. I just figured out Blue's Clues. I need this everywhere. I need this in here, I need this in the ends as well. So we, we are not off, we, we're definitely not off the hook. Wait, oh no, but then if I hit this case, that means it's also going to do, oh, hmm, that's true, isn't it? So I found an octave, but I also want to run this code here, but I can't just... Because it's a pattern match, it's going to return from here, it's not going to run or execute any other cases. This is the case that it wants to run. So that's not good. That's, that's not so nice. Okay, well we can do that. Ugh, yeah, we can certainly do that. We can do that again. 
can just keep writing events uh, in all these cases. Yeah, that's. I think that's what I have to do. So this is not very elegant at all. This uh, this actually is really ugly. I I I don't like this. There must be a way to make this nicer. But for now, yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is just gross. This, that just feels yucky. Nice. What do you mean I can't just write events? Are you kidding? Uh, are you joking? Just let me write the event. Uh, maybe I need to do that then. I don't know. I don't really know at this point. I have to write these still, otherwise I end up with nothing. But then it complains anyway that that's wrong. Because now, because oh, I expected that, but then I got that. Of course. Of course, of course, of course. This is not okay. This is very not okay. What, what do I have to do? To owned or something? I don't know. That's not good at all. Yeah, what? Can I, why can I not just like write back the event that I just got? Because I need ownership of it? That's what it looks like. E dot into owned. Nice. Maybe that's what I need to do. I'll do it if that's what works. Still yucky. That doesn't work. Um, this is not good. This is very not good. This is very bad. This is super bad. Super duper bad. What, is he, what what the heck is this? Can I do that? Is that what you want? That doesn't make sense. No, 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 no. Okay, this is going to hell in a handbasket right here. What's going on? Right event. What does right event want? I just want to look at this guy. Well, it seems like it just wants to have an element, right? Like, bytes end. Borrowed. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's because I'm copying over the file, right? So I would have to do this writer event for everything, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. What is going on? What is going on? I'm gonna try making a bite start owned. I'll give it e dot into uh, into own oh good lord <laughs> okay yeah it does let me do that oh yeah no maybe not maybe I don't need that 
Maybe I don't need that. Maybe all it wants is this. What if I did that? I don't understand. I do not at all. Oh wait, right, 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 that's the wrong type. Is it event and then start? Yes, okay. There we go. Just do that. Do this. And then everything will be okay. Yeah, we'll just do the same thing here. But instead of start, we'll use end. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing down here. Oh, this is so bad. This code is not... Well, I suppose it could be... Oh, really? Are you joking me right now? I cannot move out of old content. Nice. What? You gave me this wrath. Okay, what if I get rid of the ref on this guy, too? Okay, there we go. That's different. Oh, look, and now it actually looks correct now. Well, except for... What's the error up here? There's an error in here, but... Is there an error in here? Yeah, there is. It's the same error. Huh. So is that, like, badly formatted, um... XML, or is, like, IntelliJ not very good at picking up, uh... XML? Because it, it seemed to load just fine when I gave it to the site. That's interesting. Anyway... Uh, yeah, let's, uh, now that we've generated a XML for this, let's try giving it a shot. Where's that site I was at? Right here. Cool. Let's try a different one. Alright, now I'm uploading foo.xml. We're going to see what happened. <laughs> let's see just how horribly th this ended up. I th think that worked. Yeah, I think it worked. It looks like it's shifted everything up an octave, so... Yeah, there we go! <laughs> that was probably the most complicated way I could have possibly done this. But it's done! I, I did it! I, I accomplished my goal! Don't let your memes be dreams, kids. Just, just do it. <laughs> that's, that's the moral of today's story, I guess. So, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna play it. I can't actually hear it because obviously I'm using a microphone, and if, well, I'm not using a headset, so I won't be able to actually have the audio, otherwise I'll go to the microphone and it'll cause like a feedback loop and that kind of sucks, but... Yeah. Hopefully it, I, I did actually uh, pick up the audio from my computer. I actually don't know if it's picking that up. If it isn't, then oh well. You we don't get to hear it, but... It should be correct, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Uh, that's it.